Hi, I'm Daniel Chand, evangelist and founder of Walking Like Jesus Ministries, and it is my joy to be with every single one of you today. And I know that today is going to be a powerful episode and broadcast. I believe that as we're ministering today, Holy Spirit is going to move through the camera into your living room, into your body, your life, and bring transformation today. So I encourage you, turn up the volume, put your seatbelt on, and get ready to receive all that God has for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, today I want to share about my journey coming to Christ. I've not always been a Christian. There was a point in my life where I was on fire for the devil, living a life of violence, depression, sin, immorality. That was me. And I was 19 years old and I found myself on the way to prison for an eight-year sentence. And while I was on bail, a friend of mine said to me, Daniel, I can see that you're depressed. I can see that you're wasting your life away. I said, absolutely, I am. And he said to me, well, I know someone who can get you out of this mess. And I said, who? And he said, Jesus. And I laughed in his face because I've heard about Jesus. I had information in my head about him, but no revelation in my heart. You see, I heard about the baby in the manger. I heard about how some people say he's just a prophet or a historical figure. I heard about him, but I hadn't been with him, met with him, experienced him on a personal level. This friend of mine said to me, Daniel, yes, Jesus can save you from this court case, but he doesn't just want to save you from this court case. He wants to save your soul from eternal damnation. And friends, in that moment, my heart started to soften and I said a prayer with him, asking Jesus to wash away every one of my sins and just ask for his grace, his spirit, his love to enter into my life. And nothing changed straight away. I still looked the same. And if I'm honest with you right now, I still felt the same. But friends, I began to pursue God. I began to seek him, not with 50% of my heart, but with all of my heart. It was like a hunger on the inside began to develop for God. And I had tried everything else. I'd tried wrong relationships. I've tried sinful living. In that moment of my life, I tried everything else. And that emptiness in my heart that I'm trying to fill with the things of this world, nothing could satisfy my heart. But now I'd given my life to Jesus in this moment and asked the Holy Spirit into my heart, something began to change. And every day I began to now talk to God, not as if he's a thousand miles away hiding in the cloud somewhere. I began to talk to him as if he's closer than the very air that I'm breathing. I began to talk to him as if I am a son and he is my father. I began to talk to him as if I am a friend of God and God is a friend of mine. I'm talking about relationship with God. And friends, that's what Christianity is. Christianity is not a religion. Religion is about what you do, do, do. But Christianity is about what has been done, done, done. Religion is about human beings trying to get to God. But Christianity is God coming down to reach the human being. Friends, there's no one like Jesus. And I began to realize in that moment that God loves me. God wants to save me. God wants to help me. And in my imperfections, yes, people have come and gone. Yes, I might be lonely and isolated, but there is a God who loves me. And in the midst of my brokenness, he wants to help me. Friends, I want to remind you, a physician, a doctor, a GP doesn't help someone who's already well and healed and whole. A doctor helps someone who's hurt and broken. I want to tell you right now, Jesus is referred to as the great physician. He wants to heal you, restore you. And a lot of the times we want to get perfect and then come to God. That's religion. God wants us to come as we are and allow his love, his blood to wash you, his love to change you, his grace to fix you. Hallelujah. And friends, I experienced that firsthand. And I've now given my life to Jesus. I'm now praying to him, reading the Bible, pursuing God every day. 
And now this hunger on the inside of my heart began to develop. You may say spiritual hunger. What do you mean? A hunger for what? Friends, a hunger on the inside of my heart, not just for his hand, but for his face. Many people want to come to God and they want to say, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. And of course, I needed a breakthrough in the court case. So part of me, yes, was like, God, please give me a new chance, a new life. But in my heart, I was like, God, I want you not for just what you can give me, but I want you for you. I want to find you. I want to pursue you. And I want the real thing. I want the authentic. I don't want religion. I don't want churchianity. I don't want to just talk Christianese. I want Jesus. I want to touch you, Lord, and I want you to touch me. I want the real thing. And anyways, I began reading a book by a man called Smith Wigglesworth. And I didn't know who this man of God was. And I had been saved probably only a few weeks at this point. And I began reading about this man of God and reading about scriptures, testimonies, and the Bible in a way I've never heard before. And friends, for some of you that know who this man of God was, he was known as the apostle of faith in the early 1900s that saw God move in a powerful, powerful way in the United Kingdom. So I think that's what stirred my heart up the most, that Lord, you moved. In this nation, I think it's one thing to hear testimonies of God moving overseas or God moving in the Middle East or wherever else. But to hear God moving in the United Kingdom, I'm talking about testimonies, friends, amputated body parts growing back. I'm talking about the dead being raised in this nation, supernatural signs and wonders breaking out. And something transpired in my heart. It was like a spark went off to know more of this God, to find him, to experience him. And eventually, trial was coming along and this court case was really coming to a close and part of me was scared, if I'm to be transparent with you, but part of me was at peace, where I'm like, Lord, if I go into prison, fine. I'll go into prison and I'll serve you and I'll do whatever it is that you're calling me to do. And then as this court case was approaching closer and closer, I take this little Christian book with me everywhere. And fast forwarding now, I'm on the train on the way to the court case. And as I'm sitting there on the train, I'm looking up at the skies saying, Lord, if it's your will, please deliver me. Give me another chance in life. Set me free. Save me. But Lord, nonetheless, let your will be done. And I sat on the train and carried on reading this Christian book. And there was a scripture in this book, Mark 11, 22 to 24. And it's as if the scripture jumped off the pages and hit me in the forehead. As a matter of fact, I go a bit deeper. It's as if Holy Spirit breathed on the scripture in that moment and it became a revelation knowledge. What do I mean by revelation knowledge? I'm talking about going beyond head knowledge, intellect, and the realm of reasoning. I'm talking about the Word of God combined with the Holy Spirit hitting your heart and causing a reaction to take place. And as I look back, this moment was actually the first time that the gift of faith came upon me. Now, there are nine powerful gifts of the Holy Spirit. The free revealing gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. Oh, how we need the discerning of spirits in this day and hour. The discerning of spirits is when you can see through the propaganda, you can see through the lies, and you can see through the ulterior motive. It's as if God gives you a supernatural ability to see through hidden agendas before they've even stabbed you in the back. You've seen it from a mile off. That's what the discerning of spirits will do. Before that person has even attacked you, you'll recognize the demon that's at work behind the scenes. That's what the discerning of spirits will do. Remember, it's not called discernment. It's called the discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. The discerning of spirits will help you realize the difference, not just between right and wrong. Anyone can do that. The discerning of spirits will help you realize the difference between that which is true 
and that which is really true. Are you listening to me? They're the free revealing gifts. Then you've got the free speaking gifts, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Then you've got the free power gifts, the working of miracles, healing and the gift of faith. And this moment, while I was on the train, on the way to the court case, a pinnacle moment in my life, this is where the gift of faith came upon me for the first ever time. When the gift of faith comes upon you, a number of things happen. The only way I can describe it is really like this. God unscrews your head, pours out the unbelief, pours out the doubt, pours out the junk, and empties you of yourself, and then fills you with his faith, fills you with his ability and fills you with a faith that comes only from God. Screws your head back on and says, go on then, my son, speak to the mountain and you watch what happens. That's the gift of faith. And one of the first things that happens when the gift of faith gets upon you, the opinion of man, out of the window. Fear of man, totally gone. And suddenly, as I read that scripture, Mark 11, 22 to 24, I stood up on the train, not concerned about who's looking at me, who's watching me. And as the scripture tells me to speak to the mountain without doubting, I spoke to that mountain. And I said, listen, you court case, I'm speaking to you. I don't care what the piece of paper says. I don't care what the judge says. I don't care about any of that. I'm standing on the word of God right now and I command you, be cast into the sea right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go! And friends, a miracle had taken place. It was divine intervention. And I remember waking up that next morning in awe of God. And in my heart, I just knew that I knew that I knew God got me out of that mess. Thank you to the lawyer. Thank you to the solicitor. But I know that I know that I know it was God. He delivered me. He set me free. And friends, the reality of being born again was manifesting in my life. That's the only way I can explain it. The truth of being regenerated and born again. Because now that smile, not only on my face, but the inner smile, I can't get rid of now. Them same streets that I was walking past angry, looking at people with a mean look. I'm now walking down them same streets, smiling, ready to love people, help people. God had changed my heart. I had been born again. What does it mean to be born again? It's as if I had a spiritual heart transplant. That angry heart, that sinful heart, that stony heart is now gone. Now God has put his love in me, his nature on the inside of me, and I am born again. It's like inside this house, the lights were off. Now the lights have come back on. It's as if now the grass is greener, the sky is bluer. I can see the creation of God all around me now. I can see his beauty in just me living life. And I knew that my life has been radically changed. And I was just like, Lord, no more 50-50 Christianity. I want to live for you totally. I want to be fully surrendered. And friends, from that point, the journey begun and that hunger on the inside of me just began to develop and develop and develop. And some, there's something profound about God where he will fulfill you, but leave you wanting more of him. It's as if you're just on the edge of the ocean when you feel like you're getting to know him and there's so much more of God that you can get to know. And this is the beauty of Christianity, that he fills you, satisfies you, but leaves you wanting more of him. Hallelujah. And that hunger on the inside of me just began to develop and develop and develop. And I now began to go out on the streets and tell people about Jesus. I'd tell people about his love and what he's done in my life. I'd be going out into the shopping centers, on the streets, university, wherever the Holy Spirit was leading me, we would go. There was times we'd go into hospitals and, and end up in different areas of the hospital to tell people about Jesus, you know, and it was an incredible journey. And as time went on, that hunger just developed and developed and developed. And uh, there's a scripture that I want to read that truly became a reality in my heart. 
Psalms 42, verse 1, it says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you. Friends, do you know what it means to have your soul longing for God, longing for his touch? The scripture says God is a rewarder of those who earnestly, diligently seek him. Hallelujah. And there was an earnesty, a diligence in my heart as I was seeking and wanting to know more of him. And eventually, I remember being in a meeting where Holy Spirit was just falling and touching lives. And it was a meeting of evangelists. And I remember being in that service and I was hungry. I, I had made up my mind. I was like, Lord, I am not going to leave this building unless you touch me. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Lord, you've got to touch me. If you can touch Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting Christians, Lord, I know you can touch me. Lord, I don't want to leave this building the same way as I came in. Lord, I need the baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, I need your touch. You can't give from a dry and empty place. You've got to first receive from God and then become that change towards someone else. You receive that love from on high so you can share that love with your neighbor, with your loved ones. Listen, some of you might struggle with loving people. If that's the case, you need more time with Jesus. Experience his unconditional love where he forgives you of everything, where he loves you despite of your flaws and weaknesses. Experience his love first and then now go and receive and then spread that love to your neighbor, to your friends and even to your enemies. Hallelujah. Even your frenemies. Some of you have got frenemies, friends that act like your enemies or enemies that act like your friends. And you've also got to love people like that. But you can't do it in your own strength. We need his love from on high. Hallelujah. And friends, as I was in that Christian meeting, Holy Spirit was falling. I had my hands lifted up. But more than my posture in the natural realm, the posture of my heart was empty and hungry. The posture of my heart was diligent in pursuing God. And I believe that's what God is more concerned about because religion will have you postured in certain positions. Religion will have you speaking loud in your decibel, but inside your heart isn't actually hungry for God. God isn't into religion. God wants your heart. And we've got to become hungry from the very inside of our heart. And that's exactly what took place in my life. I was totally transformed. And as I was hungering, the power and presence of God came upon me. And the same day, friends, I had what I can only describe as electricity going through my body. It was the presence of God. It was as if I took my fingers and put them in an electric socket. And for hours and hours and hours, the power of God was going through my body. It was supernatural. It actually lasted gently for weeks. It was a, a massive, massive touch from God. And I was totally changed. And friends, the same day that happened, I wanted to go out and spread the gospel. The same day, I didn't want to wait 10 years. I didn't want to wait until I, you know, get married and all of that stuff. There was an urgency in my heart to reach souls, souls, souls. And I went out into London and started telling people about Jesus. And I remember being in Westfield and praying for a certain individual that got supernaturally healed by God and was just touched in such an undeniable way by God. And from that moment, friends, the ministry was birthed, walking like Jesus. And we have never looked back and we have never taken our foot off the gas. And let me just say this. No one can argue with your testimony, okay? Certain people are spoon-fed certain ideologies from when they're two-year-old, and that has become their identity. So they can't change from that place because the same way they look a certain way from the exterior, this ideology is now their identity. But one thing that makes Christianity so unique and so different is we don't follow Christ off of our parents' faith. We don't follow Christ because it's part of our culture. We follow Christ because we have encountered him. We have been born again. We have been totally transformed. And friends, we as Christians, we have something to shout about. 
When you look at the streets and people who evangelize and share the gospel, there's no one that does it as loud as the Christian. There's no one that dances and worships God like the Christian. Because we've been changed, we've been touched, we've been transformed. Furthermore, we know where we are going. To heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, said, when I go to heaven, I'm not actually dying. I'm just moving house. Hallelujah. We know where we're going. There is such power in your testimony. And as I have shared this today, I believe that there are people watching that may wish to respond to this. I want to have a couple of calls to prayer. The first one is this. You may be watching this today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to say this, friend. Where are you going? Where are you heading? Hell is a real place. There is a place called hell where you get no second chances. There is a place called hell where you're severed from the things of God and from the presence of God. There is a place called hell and hell has no exit. It's not just going to be a 10-year sentence. We're talking about eternal damnation. But you don't have to go to a devil's hell today because heaven is also a real place. There is a place called heaven where there'll be no more discrimination, no more racism, no more pain, viruses, sicknesses, diseases. The Bible says that he will wipe away every tear from your eye. It's talking about Jesus. Heaven is a real place. And the sinless man became sin. The blessed one became cursed. You may say, Daniel, how do I get to heaven? Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. He shed his blood so your sins can be washed away. He rose again from the dead. So now death has lost its sting in your life. Hallelujah. If you fall into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you. If number one, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or number two, you once knew him, but you backslid into sin. Something happened, a depression, a isolation, a sudden loss of a loved one. Something may have happened to knock you off the narrow path. But today you want to repent. Today you want to give your life to Jesus. Will you pray with me today? Why don't you repeat after me right now? And this isn't you just parroting what the preacher on the screen is saying. This is you from the bottom of your heart having a one-to-one -one with God right now. Say this. Say, dear Jesus, I turn from my sin. I run into your arms. Wash me in your blood. I believe that you were born for me, that you lived for me, that you died on the cross for me, that you rose again for me. I receive eternal life. I receive salvation. I receive relationship with God. I renounce Satan. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, come and fill me right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, if you said that prayer today, I want to say this. Your name has been written in a big book in heaven. The angels are rejoicing that another one has come home. Another one has come home. Do get in touch with the team. You are now a member of the family of God. You're a citizen of heaven. You know where you are going and now God is calling you to live a life surrendered and pleasing unto him. My final prayer is going to be for those that may be watching and you've got a loved one that's in the world, a family member that's living in darkness, living in sin or maybe in a similar situation to that court case. Why don't we pray right now for a deliverance to take place in their life? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every viewer right now and Lord, we pray a prayer for them or, and even their loved ones that may need a miracle right now. Lord, we stand on Mark 11, 22 to 24, and we speak to whatever that mountain may be right now, that mountain of sickness, disease, demonic oppression, that mountain of sin, temptation, whatever it may be in their life, holding them down. We command you, go in Jesus' name. Get off their life. And we pray, Lord, may a deliverance, a healing, a miracle take place today in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree with me and you receive this prayer, say amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what a joy it was to be with you. I want to say a special thank you to all those who pray for us, all those who partner with our ministry. We love you all so much, and it was a joy to be with you today. I'll see you very soon. Hi, this is Daniel Chand, and today I would like to open my heart up with you all and share with you the vision of Walking Like Jesus Ministries. We are approaching the 10-year anniversary of this ministry, and wow, God has done wonders. Countless testimonies of lives that have been changed, souls that have been saved, the sick that have been healed. God has truly moved in a remarkable way. And we are believing God that the next decade will be one of double harvest, where we will see more people reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The heartbeat of the Father is souls, 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 orphans, being made sons and daughters, the lost being found, those in darkness translated in the light. Friends, this is what it's all about. And the primary focus of this ministry is winning the lost at any cost. Some of you may have seen the project of the stage truck. Well, we are happy to announce the stage truck has been complete. We were out in Oxford a few weeks ago and we had the stage truck out and what an incredible tool this is for the kingdom of God. There's nothing like it, it's so unique. It's covered in Jesus saves and before we've even opened it up, it carries such presence and seeds are sown before we've even used it. It's an incredible weapon for the Lord and we look forward to taking this around the United Kingdom gospel crusades and soul winning initiatives are so dear to our heart we have a burning desire to see the gospel preached this year we took trafalgar square for the lord jesus christ where that whole square was filled with believers mobilized to reach the lost we had a healing station where we had teams designated to pray for the sick we had a prophetic station where people were prophesying and releasing words of life, encouragement to the public. And of course, we had the main stage where the preaching went on and the gospel was proclaimed. And friends, what an incredible mission. The Trafalgar Square missions are really increasing and growing and we know that they are going to another level. We are also traveling to the nations. We know that the fire of God that God has put upon our lives isn't to be contained. We are heading to Ethiopia in a few months time. Friends, we were last in Ethiopia in 2018. And whilst we were there, over 10,000 people were reached. But this year, over 40,000 people shall be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will be giving out free Bibles. We will be loving on people, clothing those that need resources, but we will mainly be preaching the gospel in crusade settings, open air, and we are gonna reach over four times more people than we reached in 2018. Come on, we need a bigger net. We need to go from glory to glory. We must go from faith to faith. So we are so excited about this mission. This is what it's all about, friends. Souls, souls, souls. We prioritize the media. Media is such a tool to reach the modern generation. So on social media, we are reaching millions every single week. We are on the main Christian television platforms on a weekly basis, discipling and releasing a message that's radical, relevant and for evangelism. Come on, we need that on the TVs. I had a report come in recently of someone who saw our programs in a prison cell and he was watching from prison and he wrote to us saying that the preaching has touched him, he's been changed and while he's in the prison, he is being discipled. So media is also reaching people around the globe. Sometimes I'm shocked when I see reports of us reaching people in Papua New Guinea or people on the other side of the globe and it's, it's incredible to see what God can do through the media. Friends, the ministry is growing at such a fast pace. The teams are growing, the impact and reach is increasing. 
God is doing so much and we are in a position where we need a building. The Revival Centre is what we are believing God for. It will be a centre that will have its own auditorium for revival services, equipping, schools and leadership training and really encouraging the next generation of evangelists and revivalists. It would have a TV media studio, it would have a land where we can put up our own tent. This building would not just be an ordinary building that's dormant or inactive, but it would really be a building that's in use for revival and for an end time army to be trained. So we want to encourage you to join your heart with us, join your faith with us, as we believe God that these next 10 years will be a decade of double harvest. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a joy to bring you the Word of God in the comfort of your home. Why don't you comment below, click like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of future content. Thank you for joining us today.